last class, we finished up our work with the aggregate expenditure model. Um, and again, remember, kind of the whole reason that we were building that and utilizing that model was that model was a stepping stone. Um, that model actually helps us to, to derive the, the last two models that we kind of want to look at um, in, in our, our view of economic growth, um, whether it's a short-run phenomenon or a long-run phenomenon. Um, so that's kind of the, the idea with that. It's, it's, it's a stepping stone. Uh, and it's going to help us build that ISMP model. And I know I wrote this on the board, uh, but we didn't really build much or do much with it. So we're going to start making that transition. Um, so first of all, just kind of what it stands for, IS, investment saving, MP, monetary policy. So we are effectively including all of that, again, that monetary policy, that savings, et cetera, into our... Uh, into our model so we can see impact on long-run GDP. Um, so I actually do have a definition for ISMP, um, so I thought I'd give that to you real quick. The ISMP model shows all situations where the aggregate goods market shows all situations where the aggregate goods market um, maybe in parentheses in your notes, put that's the AE market. So whenever the book talks about aggregate goods market, it is referring back to that AE model. Shows all situations where the aggregate goods market and the money market are simultaneously in equilibrium. and shows all situations where the aggregate goods market and the money market are simultaneously in equilibrium. Effectively, this is gonna show us how changes in the interest rate affect real GDP. That's the gist of that definition of what we're hoping to show. How changes in the interest rate affect real GDP. Um, so the first half of this that we're going to look at, we're, we're going to do the IS curve uh, first and derive that. And then we'll put the MP curve in and then we'll start talking about how they change. So let's start with the IS curve. And again, I'll give you a definition for it. The IS curve shows the combinations of interest rates. combination of interest rates and real GDP amounts that lead to good market equilibrium, that lead to goods market equilibrium. Shows the combination of interest rates and real GDP amounts that lead to goods market equilibrium. So if we kind of, uh, I'm just going to do this small and you can leave it because we'll do a better graph over there in a minute. If we kind of think back to when we, we did our uh, aggregate expenditure model, um, we have Y, we have spending, we had this 45 degree production function. And then remember we had our aggregate expenditure function and, um, and part of this aggregate expenditure function was based on some autonomous value, this A. And we said, what, what's going in there? We said things like wealth are going in there, things like future expectations. And then one of the things that I wrote on the board was the interest rate, right? That the interest rate fluctuation may change our de desire to spend regardless of what our income is. Which means that this aggregate expenditure function is occurring at some interest rate value, right? So this is a, you know, at R equals 5%. Arbitrary, made up, there's no like math or anything that I did to get that. So then the question kind of becomes, you know, what, what if the interest rate changes? How does that impact our model? Um, all right, well, if the interest rate rises, let's say it goes from 5 to 10%, what impact do we expect that to have on spending? Um, well, at 5%, um, I know people are still buying houses, 
Yeah, sure. Buying cars. Um, at 10%, probably not going to be as likely to buy a house, or not likely to buy his car. Effectively, we would expect spending to fall. So if, if R changes, if R goes up, we expect spending to go down. And since aggregate expenditure is our is you know you know a curve representing spending, we expect aggregate expenditure to go down. Right? So R up, spending down. So I go to a lower point on this spending axis, and I would have some new aggregate expenditure function, you know, where at R equals what I say, 10%, sure. So you'll notice AE2, less spending because of the higher interest rate. All of this works in reverse as well. So if R goes down, spending would go up. It would start us at some higher point and aggregate expenditure would go up. So right, we can look at that in terms of an impact in our model. So what I want to do is, is effectively kind of take this graph here, and I want to use this as a derivation graph. We've done derivation graphs a couple of times already. Um, remember, these are the graphs that we're going to stack on top of each other. And, um, and, and see if I can get my IS function. So I'm going to effectively take this you know, same graph that I have right here. Okay. So I have a minute to redraw. Y spend forty five degrees, and let's go. We'll go kind of higher up just so it'll be easier to see. So here's our AE one, and AE one was going to occur at an interest rate of five percent. So R equals five percent. And I didn't do it on this other graph, but I want to do it now. I want to go ahead and give me a Y value for that. It's not a very good dotted line. So there's Y1. Okay, and uh, what happened when we raised the interest rate? Our aggregate expenditure function fell. So we went to AE2, and R was equal to 10%. Right, shift downward. And uh, that, again, we didn't put it on the other one, but we need to now. That gives me some new Y2 value. If we remember the definition I gave for the IS curve, the IS curve shows the combination of interest rates, R, and real GDP amounts. So we want to combine R and Y into one graph. And um, if we look at the graph we have, we already have an axis assigned to Y. Which, remember earlier in the semester, we said we can carry any value down as long as the scale is the same. So I want to make that stack derivation graph, that two panel kind of graph where I again have y on my horizontal axes so that whatever the distance y2 is from the origin, it's going to be identical in the bottom graph. Whatever the distance y1 is from the origin, it's going to be identical in the bottom graph. The other variable that our IS curve needs, it said, is the interest rate. I still have an axis open. I have a variable I need to show. That's going to work out perfect. So I'm going to put r here. At this point, it becomes basic counting. We need to count up to 10. Um, okay, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. All right, 2, so there's 4, there's 6, so 5 would be right in the middle. And uh, now we just say, what happened when? Well, when the interest rate was at 10%, R was at 10%, we were at Y2. So Y2, 10%, needs an ordered pair combination. Uh, whenever the interest rate was at 5%, we were at Y1, so I need an ordered pair combination at 5% and Y1. I can connect these two dots, and I have a function that now shows the relationship between the interest rate and real GDP as an inverse relationship. This should not be surprising to anyone. We've said this numerous times. 
that at really, really, really high interest rates, it puts pressure on real GDP to fall. Firms don't look to invest. They're going to produce less. Consumers aren't going to buy as much, which again, incentivizes firms to produce less. No matter how you look at it, at a high interest rate, firms want to reduce their production. Now, um, again, keep in mind, this right now, at least at this point, is only focusing on the interest rate and real GDP. Because you know, some of you are thinking, why would the Federal Reserve ever consider raising interest rates? We said that was an option um, before, right? Um, well, remember, the Federal Reserve has a lot of different things that they're balancing. They want to promote economic growth, sure. They can do that through the money supply. They also need to be wary of inflation. And sometimes the Federal Reserve says, hey, we've got to um, raise the interest rate because that was how they got money supply to fall. Maybe they need, they're worried about inflation, um, so they might say we need to sacrifice GDP a little bit to prevent some massive inflation event. So just kind of keep that in mind that there's more things going on than the Federal Reserve um, that they have to worry about. So um, while this is true that there is always an inverse relationship between GDP and the interest rate, that is not just to be used as a prescription to say always make the interest rate zero because that's the best GDP can be. Um, well, yeah, but then you might be artificially inflating it with really, really, really high prices. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, okay, so we've got an IS function. So now the next question I think can, can become, can the IS curve change? Yes. Uh, I, so I'm going to switch colors again. So for those of you who, who want to um, kind of think about it as another color, we can. And I'm actually just going to make, I'm, I'm going to make a whole brand new graph that can correspond to this. So I'm going to do this aggregate expenditure one again. But I'm only going to start with my uh, one, my, my interest rate at 5%. Okay. And so from that, that gave us some, you know, Y1 value. Okay, now I want to keep interest rate constant. So I'm going to lock it at 5% and say we've already looked at other changes. If the interest rate is constant at 5%, there's other changes that can occur in this model. Last class, we looked at, um, at, at increasing investment spending, and that caused our aggregate expend, uh, expenditure curve, sorry, I said I'm switching colors, there we go, our aggregate expenditure curve to go up. Right, it went up here to AE2, and R is still equal to 5%. So there can be other changes in this aggregate expenditure model, right? This, just like we saw last time. And you'll notice that that moves to us to Y3. I want to take all of this information and bring it into this graph as well. Sorry, this got a little messy there. Um, bring it into this graph as well. So if I keep the interest rate constant at 5, I originally was at Y1 in my first graph. Now my second graph shows that if I increase spending while holding the interest rate constant, I would have some greater real GDP amount. Y1 goes to Y3, which is a rightward movement. Right? Y3 would be somewhere over here. I would have an ordered pair combination at 5% and at Y3, which means there would be a point right here that does not exist on our current IS curve. That tells me it has to be a shifter in our IS curve. I have to have some new IS function right here, some IS2 that has shifted us to the right. 